I don't know what the plan is today. I don't even know why I've hit start record, but I mean, the transfer window closes in five days and Guerrero is no longer our player. The board accepted a bid above my head. He's moved to Crystal Palace. The only silver lining, it's worth 25 million pounds and it could be worth 10 million pounds more. I mean, 25 million pounds, it is nice. It is, I suppose, just a shame that with how the deal's structured, we are gonna get two 7.5 million pound installments over the next two years. But on the flip side, I mean, the club's financials are now sorted, I guess. And there's other clauses that could kick in and a sell on of profit. So if he ends up being insane, we should get some good money, maybe. Originally, I wasn't going to do an episode at this point, but given the fact the transfer window closes in a matter of days, and suddenly we're left with £28 million as a transfer budget and a load of wage budget, I probably should make some signings. I'm going to go away real quick and do the MK Dons game in the Carabao Cup. Then we will return. Transfer deadlines day is coming up. We have a game against Sheffield United, who are currently down in 19th. A game that we could win. Will we win it? We'll find out together, shall we? How is it going folks? Welcome back to Park to Prem. Today is episode number 56 and I humbly declare today the transfer panic episode because I feel like we probably should be doing something in the market but the reality is if we are going to do anything it's got to be done in the next five days. We have also got a Sheffield United game that will be occurring at some point during today's episode. I mean, if we want to look at a positive, Guerrero is the only man who's left so far in this window, despite the likes of Ingoma trying to force moves and being unhappy, Ricky D being a bit concerned, and to be fair, just general happiness across the board not being all that positive, everyone else is here at least right now. I will say when you look at the overall happiness, especially of the more influential players, it maybe is a minor cause for concern, but the good news is on the pitch, things are going okay. And I suppose before we potentially dive into the transfer market, we should talk about games since last episode. We have played four games, three of those in the league, two of them resulted in wins. The first of which was this away game against Oxford United. We were two goals up in this game. I gave Oscar a penalty. Remember Oscar? How could you forget him? Desperate to get this guy's first uh, goal for the club. So desperate, I put him on a penalty and he missed it. Uh, good news for us is, despite them scoring in the 91st minute, the missed penalty didn't cost us it. So a win there was nice, but sadly against Nottingham Forest, who are currently flying high at the top of the table, we got absolutely destroyed. Doesn't really help when N'Goma gets sent off in the 35th minute, but despite being at home, um, yeah, they destroyed us, to be frank. I mean, just being real for a moment, it was 3-1 when the sending off happened. We were already being destroyed. That said, and I don't want to make excuses for us, if we go to team detailed stats and look at salaries per year, Nottingham Forest Forest spend 66.58 million pounds a year on salaries. Are you ready for where we are in this list? Uh, yeah, we spend 2.77 million. I really cannot stress this. We are a tiny football club in the grand scheme of things. And I know I've talked about this before, but this is further compounded by the fact that due to our reputation being that of a League Two club, we only really have the pulling power to sign players that would otherwise join other League Two clubs. Whilst we do have a lot of money, if we want to sign players who are really, really good, we have to offer them a load of money to lure them in. And when I talk about lots and lots of money, we're talking like tens of thousands of pounds. And just as a reminder, our highest Turner is on £8,000 a week. If you're wondering about how Ricardo Sanchez is doing, by the way, I mean, so far, 7.18 rating? Uh, I don't want to say it prematurely. He might be worth the money. Anyway, after the Nottingham Forest game, we got a really good result in this one. Away against Wrexham. Wrexham, of course, in this universe, have been up to the Premier League and back down in recent years. Their media prediction is firmly mid-table. Really good performance this one. Sam Fay picking up man of the match again in this one. Two goals, two assists. He's had an absolutely amazing start to time in the championship. Yeah, the future is looking bright with this guy here. And most recently, we did win in the EFL Cup. MK Dons away. In this game, they had a penalty that was saved by Keeley. He wound up getting man of the match. And whilst we had an XG of three, we could only score one goal. But that one goal scored was by William Espinosa. Yeah, America. Eagle noises and gunshot sounds. I feel so patriotic right now. 
I really like William. I say that every time I look at him. I, d I don't know what... I think it's the afro in the 3D match engine that makes me happy. So, of course, last episode, we ended things with two draws in our first two games. In the remaining three games, we've managed to get two wins and a defeat. It sees us currently in seventh place. And whilst Nottingham Forest look very, very good and running away with things, at least at this early stage, alongside the likes of QPR, who, of course, were promoted with us last year, we are one of many teams on eight points sat just outside the playoffs. And from a team performance point of view, there's been a few players that have chipped in with some good goals. I mentioned last episode the fact that goal scorer wise, I don't feel like we have one standout striker. Instead, we are going to be able to pick our attack force based mainly off form. And the good news is across all competitions, we've got a load of players chipping in with goals. None less important, I feel, than Zenha or Zenya, as I believe his name is actually meant to be said. The Portuguese player here has had a fantastic start to the season, albeit his best performances have come in the cup. And he is a man who can play at right attacking in mid. His best role as a striker, which is his natural position, is a Trequatista. And without saying it too loudly, could he be the replacement for Guerrero? Do I need to go and sign the Guerrero replacement with the money we've received? Or do we already have a baby Guerrero? I feel like Xenia here might be the bloke to come in and step up. Now, currently our first team sits at 25 players, but given the money that's just come into the club, I do feel like we are in a position to go out and maybe make a signing or two, even if it's some youngsters for the future. And in fact, I've already got one signing that I am, well, umming and ahhing about. And I want to know what you would do here. Here we have Christian Martinez. He is a Chilean youngster, eligible for a work permit, was flagged up by my scouts. And I know you look at him and think, Jackie's a centre-back with four jumping reach. What are you talking about? I'm not talking about him as a centre-back. I am talking about him as a wing-back on attack. I feel like the 21-year-old here is a really, really good player. Now, annoyingly, like a few players we've looked at and signed this year, he is not the most consistent of performers. But given the fact that Ricky D to start the year hasn't played very well... Could Martinez just come in and be a really good right-back option for us? I know Ricky D has this sentimental value, and I absolutely adore him too, but I do just look at his current attributes and the fact he's been overperforming them for the last few years, and his rough start to the championship. Five starts, 6.74 rating for him is poor. And I do just feel like Martinez is probably a bit of a no-brainer player to bring in. Uh, the only catch here is he will be a record fee of £1.8 million, which obviously isn't a tiny sum of money, but his wages by comparison aren't too extreme. I think it's around £4,000 a week. But like I said, I've, I've not confirmed this deal yet. I could ask for confirmation. I, just, I don't want to do Ricky D dirty. Saying all of that, the more that you kind of look at it, the more you realise maybe Ricky D could just go on the bench. I mean, he can play left back and right back, so he's a really good versatile option to have. I do feel like I just have to sign Martinez, don't I? He's not quite as good when it comes to his acceleration balance, but he's got a higher top speed, not got amazing stamina to be fair, but the mentals, the technicals, there's a lot to like about Martinez here, and he's got a work permit. He's not going to use an ESC slot. And actually, speaking of ESC slots, bit of news here. For Aronson, granted a work permit for the rest of his current contract. Of course, that is only to the end of the current year. So with him getting that work permit, he is no longer using the ESC slot, so we have one available. I have been looking to renew his contract. You can see here, he wants wages between £12,000 and £15,000. That is, that's just too much, isn't it? I mean, that is a ridiculous sum of money. We could try and resolve the contract talks here, but I, ne I need a lower wage demand. Well, if we want to resolve his contract, we have to come back and sit at the table. And his agent doesn't want to sit back at the table. I don't want to beg him. I'm not going to, we'll just back down. I, ha I, ha I kind of, I don't like this situation with Ferrarinson. Firstly, because he's probably going to leave on a free at the end of his contract, but also because I just don't think he's worth the money he's asking for. I suppose the dream scenario is he doesn't sign a new deal. He becomes more of a squad player as the year goes on, and then he recalibrates his demands, realising that unlike last year when he was the main man, he's no longer the main man. I, I guess that's the situation I'm just going to hope pans out. Now, you can see here, I have sent my scouts out looking for players, and actually, there's a few players here I've not even looked at before. Kenji Suzuki, a right-back option. Apparently, he's really, really good. He doesn't look that good, does he? This is one of those situations where I feel like the star ratings are a lie. Compared to Martinez, he's just he's nowhere near as good as he. Here we have my little mate, uh, this guy, Hungarian player. £950,000 he might be available for. He's got loads of caps for Hungary. He kind of reminds me of Timmy. This might be a weird comparison. They might not look alike at all. But actually, when you look at it here, he is quite like Timmy, isn't he? He's 19 years old, so it's not like he's getting any younger. 
But the price that he's being asked for for him here isn't that bad. I love the 20 determination as well. It's a shame he's inconsistent. I usually avoid inconsistent players, and yet this year all I've done is sign them. Maybe mate's not the wisest signing with that in mind. There is Magnus Brondbo here, who is a goalkeeper. Now, I know some people feel like Keeley should be replaced, but I feel like this is a pretty good example of where the star ratings really don't make sense. Keeley, three star ability. Magnus hit, three and a half star. And if we actually just look at the comparison, I would argue that Keeley is just a much better, well-rounded goalkeeper. I feel like the polygon shows it best. The issue with Keeley is he's on a contract for two more years, albeit on £350 a week. He wants like £10,000 a week to extend his deal. And whilst I like him as a goalkeeper, he is one of those positions that perhaps I'd be most open to replacing in the immediate term. I feel like there's not going to be many people wanting to sell their starting goalkeeper at this point in the year, but maybe I should just look through some of these players sort of by reputation and see if there's anyone particularly good. So I've looked through all the players available. The only player that's really jumped out as a possible signing would be Belko here. Now, he is at Sheffield Wednesday. He is actually a very good goalkeeper, the Slovakian. Uh, is he a massive upgrade on Keeley? I feel like mentally he is. Technicals, you could perhaps argue that Keeley has the edge. There isn't certainly a world of difference. Now, Sheffield Wednesday in this universe, they were relegated down to League 2 at the end of last year. They've actually had a really poor start in League uh, 2 as well. You can see it, they're down in 21st place. They've got a load of debt they need to pay off. In fact, their key player here is Jeffrey. Oh, okay. I saw a 19-year-old as their key player and started wondering, but he, he's loaned in from Manchester United. I have already looked through their team. There are some good players here, like Abby, who could be a decent option. But the issue I've got with all these Sheffield Wednesday players is... Their values are ridiculously high. Like, the kind of money that Sheffield Wednesday want is just actually unreasonable for the quality of the players. During the summer, it looked like we might sign Jakob Dudek, but then we couldn't get a work permit for him. Of course, there is now an ESC slot open for him if we wanted to bring in the 19-year-old. I guess the issue I've got is, with any signing that I make here, I don't want them to take first-team opportunities away from some of these really good young players that we've got. We've got such a good young core to this team. I don't really want to disrupt it. I, I want to find players who are going to offer immediate quality. Not sure Jakob's quite of that level. I am just looking through the England youth setups to see if there's any particularly good players. I have found Nemo, you know, finding Nemo. Uh, he's on loan from Tottenham. He's not going to join us, is he? You realise when players like this are on £15,000 a week, we really are looking for needles in the haystack when it comes to improving our team. There are a couple of players in the England under-18s team who play uh, in the National League, but I'm going to be honest, Gary Smith and Romain here... Not very inspiring. My scouts have got some recommendations here. I love the fact that this guy with a release clause of £32 million is being suggested to me. But my staff, they know what they're doing. Have you guys seen... Oh, what show was it? It was the... Uh, the Sunderland uh, kind of Netflix series, you know, where they're like looking at players to sign and one of the scouting members recommends Zlatan Ibrahimovic to a championship Sunderland. I feel like this is the equivalent, but in Football Manager. Kazuto Sato here looks absolutely amazing. A very, very good Japanese player. I mean, I'm wearing a Japanese shirt right now. Maybe this is a sign. He looks good. 20 years old. He's probably not going to want to join me, is he? No, but he wants to come on loan. I mean, I don't want to loan him. I mean, I respect the fact that my scouts have made this list of players. It's just a shame that all these players they've got on the list aren't that amazing. Although this guy, given Ilton of Anderlecht, he actually looks quite good. No mentals. I mean, he's kind of like a worse version of Heinz, if I'm not mistaken. The polygons are very similar. Yeah, he, he is literally just, uh, maybe not worse, but definitely not better. Slightly older too. I like Toby Hines a lot. I don't need a striker. It is a weird situation to be in when we've got all this money that we're sat on and I just feel like I should be doing something with it. Rafe have got a couple of young players here in the Scotland national team setup. I don't know why, but for whatever reason, Rafe Rovers just seem to produce mad players in Football Manager. I recommend right now, whatever you're doing, drop it. Go check out Rafe. Yeah, I don't know why. They, I've always seen them have good youth intakes. Sadly, in this universe, they're not quite good enough. I started this episode by hitting start record thinking we'll just go with the flow. I realise I probably should focus on getting to deadline day because I do feel like you get some interesting options offered to you then. In the intermission, though, I think I am going to sign Christian Martinez here. He is a player who was recommended by our scouts. He is definitely a right back, not a centre back. But if we can make him into a good right back... I think he's going to be really, really good value for money. £4,500 a week is wages, but that does include a two-year optional extension. So it's basically a five-year deal for him. I'm going to confirm that one. It pains me to say it, everyone, 
the rickety era, it might be over. You can see here as well, I've just triggered a load of optional extensions that some of the players currently in the first team had, just so they're on the longest deals possible. Apparently, Ferrarrington's agent is willing to come back and chat. <laughs> he wants wages between 13 and 16,000. I mean, it's just ridiculous, isn't it? It is just ridiculous. I really wish that someone was just showing some interest in this guy. Even for like a million pounds, I would probably let him go. I'm not going to lie, as I bring Christian Martinez into the starting 11 over Ricky D, I feel like I've committed a betrayal. Even, even though I know it's for the greater good and Ricky D is just not as good. I, just, I, feel, I feel dirty. I feel evil. I feel bad. At the same time, though, Martinez is bloody good, isn't he? You know what? If he performs well, I won't even feel bad, will I? In, in, give me a game. Live commentary debut coming right up. If he plays well, we'll all be happy. I've spent all this time on wing and ring. You know what? I'm going to get to the Sheffield United game, get that match done, and then deadline day will happen, and we can have some deadline day drama. It's been a while since we had some. I feel like there's lots of unresolved issues of unhappy players, players with some interest in them. A lot could still happen in today's episode. Apparently, we are stepping up interest in Andreas Muller. I mean, this, this is news to me. I've never seen this bloke before in my life. We've not even scouted him. Also, with all the bad news going on in the world, it's nice to look through our team here and realise that loads and loads of our players are just training really, really well. This makes me happy. All the youngsters developing nicely. I know I like to big up players a lot. Look how much Sam Fay has improved in the last, what, how long? 16 months? The bloke is 17. By the time he's 20, he's going to be absolutely mad. I can't wait. Okay, we've got this game against Sheffield United. It is going to be a big one. I'm looking at the team thinking, we're in good shape for this game. Yes, we've had a few pit fixtures piling up and also Ngoma is suspended. Sanfe, on you come. But in our first game in a post-Guerrero era... I still feel kind of optimistic. You know, it gives an opportunity for Zener to come in and really try and step up. I look at players like Faye thinking, you know what, even if Ngoma's out, this guy can perform at this level. I mean, maybe this is all going to come crushing and crashing down around me, given the fact their media prediction is ninth. But... I feel like we have a chance to get something today. Of course, the man to keep your eye on today is going to be the number 19, Christian Martinez. Live commentary debut. We've just flown him in from Chile. Much like a lot of the players we've brought in, he's not had much of a preseason or any time to really adapt. We are throwing in these players very raw, very fresh, and hoping they can make something happen. Sheffield United, three defeats in their first five games. This feels like one that's there for the taking. Let's try and make something happen. I suppose the big question here is going to be, are we going to miss Guerrero and Ngoma today? Probably the two best players in our team heading into this year, of course. Ngoma's still here. He's just suspended. But, you know, can we deal without them? There is a big question mark there, although with players like Sam Fay linking things up, I feel confident. Martinez on his debut, back post, phase there, can't get there. For a moment, I thought we were going to start off with a Ricky D-like assist from Martinez. Instead, it might be Sheffield United trying to hit us on the counter. Although, NDIA, lovely tackle by the left-back. Little one-two, give and go. Options in the middle for him to pick out. Oscar is one of them who can't get there. Although, it bounces to him. It falls to him. It's calamitous defending. We don't care. Oscar scores. We're 1-0 up. I mentioned earlier the fact that I gave him that penalty that he missed to try and get him off the mark for the year. That is now his third goal in all competitions. And finally, well, I was going to say finally he's finding his shooting boots. It's not taking him that long. We have an early lead. Martinez on the near side. I'm so excited to see a Chilean in our team. I don't remember the last time we had a Chilean right back or, or indeed any position, to be clear. Um, hopefully he's going to be able to do what Ricky did, did and then some. Oh my word, that's a deflected cross. It falls to Oscar. He scored again. Is Martinez going to get given the assist there? He shouldn't be given it. I can't believe what's happened. We have got very lucky there. Last episode, we conceded a goal, didn't we, due to that deflected effort that ended up in the back of the net. On this occasion, a deflection works out in our favour. Martinez is, whatever it was, is deflected. It falls to Oscar. No idea where the initial ball was going. I'm not going to complain. Our Honduran has two goals to his name inside the first 11 minutes. Now, to be fair, it is two goals from two shots. We're not going to get carried away just yet, but that definitely lowers the pressure just a little. And while Sheffield United looking to play out from the back, you can see how aggressive our initial press is here. Sadly, Sheffield United able to play through it, but Martinez breaks it down. 
I, I am kind of playing down, aren't I, the fact that we've spent £1.8 million, I think it was, on Martinez. He is comfortably our biggest transfer ever. Now, naturally, when you compare it to Guerrero, it looks like an insignificant fee thing. But there is, you know, a lot of money that's been put into him. And I don't want to say it prematurely because it's been 20 bloody minutes. He looks good, doesn't he? He, do, he, do, he looks confident. Everything's going through him. No, my luck, he'll concede an own goal before this game's done now that I've done bigging him up. Anyway, we've still got the ball here, by the way. Faye's coming through the middle. I'm looking at Martinez. Give it to Martinez, Faye. Or, or just go on your own. What a run this is. Imagine if he scored at the end of it. He, I don't need to imagine it. He's gone down. We've got a penalty. I hope Faye's not injured, mind you. Oscar, for the hat trick, steps up. He's, he's missed another penalty. He wouldn't normally be on penalties. I actually sorted the penalty list after last game. But because he's on a hat trick, the game gave it to him. And now NDIA's head has been headed off the line. It should be three or four at this point, shouldn't it? If we don't go on to win this game now, the two chances we've just had are going to be ones that live in the memory. Also, rare goal line decision. Highlight being shown there. Yet technology is coming into our game now that we're in the championship. Oscar, mate, that is two penalties you've missed. I've re I haven't even backed him there. He can't really take penalties. It's just because he was on a hat trick we have it set so he gets a chance. He's let me down. It's annoying, really, because he could have had a, what, 17-minute hat trick? He could still have a chance in this game, although on this occasion he's whipping the ball in and he nearly had an assist. We look bloody good in this game, don't we? We are creating so much against Sheffield United. We could be on the attack again here. Sanchez to Faye. We've got options left and right. NDIA, the left back. So much space for the Senegalese youngster to cut inside and he tried to Travella that on the outside of his foot. It's gone out for a corner. It was a decent little effort. Oscar, he's on a hat-trick. Unless he scores directly, uh, unlikely he's going to get it from this highlight as the ball is whipped in. It's cleared away. Sheffield United have had one shot in this game. We've been dominant despite a lack of possession. Okay, we've got a free kick here. Sanchez is over it. The Costa Rican youngster, he's still, I believe, looking for his first goal for the club. And, well, he's not going to get it there. His shot has hit the wall and gone out. I assume that this highlight was shown for a reason and maybe more is going to happen. Oscar is going to look for the in-swinging left-footed corner. He puts it in. Mkise's header is blocked. It falls to Zeno. A flurry of chances again. I dread to think what our XG is adding up to at this point. It's 2.66 and yet it's still only 2-0. There's another highlight as well. There's 80 seconds left of this half. Sheffield United just want to get inside. They, are, they have been bullied. Look, we win it back again here. We look all over them at the moment. It'd be so unjust, I feel like, if they were to score on the break and make it 2-1 at half time. We have been just by far and away the better team in this game. Drake O'Hare, a little bit of pressure on him as he plays it inside. Martinez needs to get back. Martinez, what are you doing? Also, he's on a yellow card. That scares me slightly. And now we've given away a penalty. I... <laughs> I can't believe what I've seen in this game. I mean, I can. It's football manager we're playing. We all can believe what we've seen. If they score here, it's going to be 2-1. And I'm going to sit thinking, how are we in this situation? It's 2-1. There's game at half time. I'm getting shouty shouty. I, I really want to throw a water bottle. <laughs> I probably shouldn't. That's probably an overreaction. I'm far from pleased though, lads. Oscar looks uncertain and unhappy. Are you taking the piss, mate? You missed a penalty. Right, into the second half we go. I've not made any changes yet, but there are a fair few players on bookings right now, including, well, three members of our back four and Zhao Victor. I'm going to change things up here. NDIA, off you come for Ryan Morgan. Ricky D, on for Martinez. Martinez has had a great debut, but I, I don't know if I can trust him. And this is not the kind of game where I'm willing to test that. Jao Victor is on a, a booking as well. I'm going to bring in Stuart Masters for him uh, to play as the uh, Segundo Volante. Striker-wise, Jude's not had the best of games. I could bring on Heinz. I could bring in Ferrarinson. I'm bringing in neither of them. William Espinosa, this game is your time to shine. Okay, four subs made. Needed to change something in this game, just given the fact we've been unsuccessful to find that kind of goal to double our lead in this game in this second half. In spite of all of that, though, they've not created a lot, and we have now got a corner. It's whipped towards the back post. Gasperi's under it. Falls to Sanchez. His header is cleared off the line, and Espinosa... Let's hit the post from point blank range. There's 10 minutes left in this game. Sheffield United are still very much in it. It is a one goal game. We deserve to be further ahead. Maybe a chance here to get a deserved goal. Oscar Espinosa. The power of the Afro compels you. 
He's hit the woodwork for the second time. He's like the American Darwin Nunes. Sheffield United throwing the ball into play inside their own half. We've looked good in this game. Let's let's just be real for a moment. We've not looked out of our depth, and that was something that I definitely felt when we got absolutely hammered by Nottingham Forest. But following on from the win against Wrexham, we've been, well, progressing well, I feel like. And we're seeing more of that here as we bring the ball forward. Faye looking for his compadre in Espinosa. Can't find him at the first time of asking. Goes on his own and... Well, if he'd scored from there, it would have been one of the goals of the season. Instead, it's just a bit disappointing, really. How much added time have you got for me, football manager? It's six minutes. We're staring in that top corner. The time is just flying away. And we have, well, maybe one late chance. Sanchez is going to whip it in. Few players there. Gasperi, I think it was, heads it over. I think the good news is with a minute left, it's not going to cost us. And in the end, we win 2-1. Oscar missed a penalty and still somehow gets man of the match. It's not overly convincing, but against a team who'd only won one of their first five, we have got to win. Even if it's just by one goal, we have to be happy with what we've seen there. Martinez had a really, really good debut. I don't feel like I was bigging him up for the sake of it. 7.5 rating, it could be the new Ricky D. I'm certainly hoping for 1.8 million, he is going to be the new Ricky D. I'm not going crazy when I think he's a great right back. I do find it confusing that he's played at centre attack in mid and right mid. But who am I to judge how they play football in Chile? I have been renewing a few contracts here and there. One such example is Zhao Victor. His contract uh, is hopefully going to be renewed for a little bit longer. It's currently only a two-year deal. I'm trying to give him a longer deal to really tie him down. We'll get news on his work permit tomorrow. Not going to lie, I'm always a bit worried when we're renewing the work permits of players who need contract extensions who aren't English. The good news is, for the most part... They're all getting work permits. Jean Victor, another player to add to that list. It is a four-year deal he signed on £3,000 a week, but it does also have an optional extension of three years. So we are tying this guy down for basically the next seven years of this price. Really good contract for us. I think for him, it's not a bad deal in the grand scheme of things, although I think maybe come the end of the year, with a few more contracts still probably to dish out as the season goes on, he's not going to be near the highest earner. Anyway, at this point, I just want to get to deadline day. I don't know about anyone else. I just want to know what's going to happen. Surely some good players will be offered to us. Maybe we can bring in some loans. Oh, God, I'm considering loans. Why would I want to loan anyone? Someone to check my pulse. Am I OK? Don't get me wrong. I think loans are really good for adding partial quality or as a short term solution. But if you've got the money to buy players or you've got young players yourself you want to develop, I just don't feel like they're the solution. I know I know certain Americans can be very offended by that, but you don't need loans to succeed. And I, I will maintain that stance. Anyway, deadline day is it. We are going to take part. Apparently, in Goma, rumoured to go to Southampton, Zenha to Leeds for 500k. Yeah, that ain't happening. I do like deadline day. I particularly like these kind of screens here where we can look at players attracting interest, players we might want to let go. Also, players with contracts expiring for Aronson. You are, he's going to cause me such a headache this year. I can already tell. And if you were wondering, by the way, Chambers, I've not had any bids for him, but Dundee have offered to loan him for the year. It's not exactly an ideal solution, given the fact he's contracts up at the end of the year. But given he finds himself so far down the pecking order, I don't think he's going to play for us. Just saving some money on his wages makes sense. Does anyone else get all excited when the user interface turns yellow on deadline day? Like, it feels dramatic. It feels intense. I don't know. Like, I, I feel on edge. I was just looking through some players here that we've got scouted, sorted by ability. Zaidu Yusufu. He looks quite good, doesn't he? 31 years old. Can play defensive mid, attacking mid, and right attacking mid. They did want a bit more com competition in the defensive mid department, or just a depth player who can cover a load of positions. He wouldn't be a bad pickup. He was um, previously playing, as you can see here, in the top division of Portugal. Wasn't exactly playing amazing. He has got an offer for him by Forense, who play in the second tier. I mean, how much money is he going to want if I want to sign him? Yeah, he wants to be an important player, which is problematic. He also wants £11,000. Never mind. We're going to leave that. Martin Ferreira, I looked at in the summer as a defensive mid option. He is still a free agent. I'm currently looking at players who are interested in a move with a wage at max £5,000. Um, that is a good way to obviously find the free agents, but also find players who might want to join us from other clubs, but probably, hopefully, fingers crossed, won't have outrageous wage demands. I remember Ferreira before had some crazy expectations. If he's lowered them slightly, given his professional personality with really good determination, wouldn't be against picking him up just as a bit of depth at defensive mid. He does want to be a regular starter and treat the club as a stepping stone, but we have been able to lower that to squad player. He wants £4,800 a week, which is annoying. Um, I mean, we do have an ESC slot free with him. 
so I could offer him slightly bigger wages. Also, I've just noticed here, it says we'll be able to allocate one of our two remaining ESC slots. Have we got five slots? I thought we only got four in the championship. I don't know. Anyway, I do like the look of Frey. I'm maybe not on £4,800 a week, though. I'll offer him 4000 and see what he says. I am willing to lower his relegation release clause. 4000 mate. 4000 you're going to be a backup. Okay, he has agreed to that. Hopefully no one's going to come and hijack that deal because whilst I don't think he's perfect, he would be a good depth player. Oh, 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 I know what's happened here. I know why we've got two ESC slots. I didn't even realise this was a thing. I'm an idiot. Because Xiao Victor signed a new contract when he was on an ESC deal but then got granted the work permit, he's no longer on an ESC deal. Oh! I mean, that means we can sign two players. I mean, that's very good. I didn't even realise it was that good when we got him on a new deal. Luka Jovic is available as a free transfer. I mean, the 32-year-old has had a bit of a fall from grace. He's not very good, is he, in this save game? I feel like he's one of those players who you think must be amazing, especially because Leeds spent £20 million on him. But yeah, he is... He's not good. There's a reason he's a free agent still at the end of August. Sander Berg as well. Kind of surprised at how much he's declined as a footballer. Normally a really good player and football manager. He looks not very exciting. I saw his name and my ears pricked up, but he is not good. Interesting to see some of these free agent players, though, actually interested now in talking to us. I'm not going to sit here and criticise anyone for their haircut, but Stuart here... Uh, <laughs> it's one of the most... He, his hair is as tall as his face is. The face just looks silly. I kind of want to sign him for the picture, but I, I don't need him. The weird thing here is, and I'll admit it, don't really know what I'm looking for. I'm now looking for players aged at most 25 with one international cap. Again, just kind of seeing what's out there, really. Okay, this guy's bloody good. Jose Luis Colk? Don't, no idea. He plays for a team called Strongest. The Strongest, apologies. Should use their full name. He's quite good, isn't he? He's 18, he is about to turn 19. Bolivia. I don't remember ever having a Bolivian player before. I know there was that Bolivian guy there. There was a player my scouts recommended who was also from Bolivia in Alexander Velaquez here. He, he's quite good too. I mean, I don't need two Bolivian players, but the temptation to sign them just because Bolivia, like, it's very, it's very real. This guy plays for Auckland United. He's 20 years old, has caps for New Zealand, and just plays in the New Zealand league is he good i don't know if he's what i need but i just kind of like the idea of signing him on a free transfer he's on an amateur deal at the moment i don't want to give him a work permit though which is probably going to annoy him does he want to join as a fringe player he wants to be a squad player i don't remember having a kiwi player in my ranks before i definitely have at some point in a series but I, I, I'd like the idea of signing him. Is it wrong to sign players for their nationality? Maybe, but Aaron King, New Zealand. I don't remember having a New Zealander before. I am now just going to look at the rest of the New Zealand national team. He was an amateur player. There's also Andy Evans, who is a, a player on an amateur deal, or at least a deal that doesn't involve wages in New Zealand. Is he good? I don't think he's as good. Tell you what, Football Manager really does take you to weird corners of the internet, doesn't it, when you're looking for players. There's a player here called Juju. It's a good name, but I, I wish he was better. His name's very fun. Apparently my scouts have looked to this guy at some point. I guess I've just dismissed him because his potential wasn't above four stars, but on an amateur deal, why not? I know someone's now going down in the comments saying, actually, Jack, you shouldn't not do it because he won't get a work permit. Don't ruin it. Stop. Cambridge United have made an offer for Dukanovic. He's my backup goalkeeper. He's not available for loan. Elsewhere, Washbourne is showing good development. Uh, worth noting with Washbourne, I've made potentially a controversial decision here. He's one of those players where when I look at his attributes, I don't know what he's good at. And at 18 years old, he has shown a little bit of promise. So what have I trained him as? A left wing back. Am I mad thinking he could be a good left wing back? I just feel like he's not quite complete enough to be a box-to-box -box centre mid. And whilst I could train him as a defensive mid, he's not amazing there. But with his pace, his mentals and his technicals, he could be a player who gets up and down the left-hand side and he's left-footed. I think it's genius. You might think it's stupid. Please let me know down below. I realise this kind of just has the energy, doesn't it, of a transfer special without it being... <laughs> 
the summer. Um, Nesbitt has a loan offer from Sheffield Wednesday. Nesbitt, I was looking to sell, but no one's really putting a bid. I don't really fancy loaning him out, to be honest. Aaron King is set to join us. Wait, I've not been asked about a work permit. Is he part English? He's part Scottish. We don't even have to give him a work permit. Oh my word, this is amazing. And speaking of Scotland, Luke Chambers going on loan to Dundee. Not an ideal thing. There are some future fees and instalments that we get as part of the deal, but yeah, he's just... Yeah, he's just going. I wish we were getting more for him. It's a bit amusing, isn't it, that I'd even check if Aaron King had, like, secondary nationalities. He's joined us. He's here. I think I love him. I'm not sure how much he's really going to feature in the first team, but he's he's just here for the vibes. I think we'll train him to play out on the right as a Trek Quatista. I think that's the play. Do you ever sign players just because it's fun? I like to do it sometimes. Aaron King is fun. And also, we'll, we'll make him available for the under-21s. He can give them some competition in the squad. Okay, Ferreira's initial work permit application has been denied. We will appeal it. I feel like as far as depth players go, we could do a lot, lot worse than this guy. I love how well-rounded he is. Like, he's not really got an obvious gap in his game as a defensive mid. Love as well the fact he's super consistent and likes important matches. Also, just professional personality is nice with the young team that we've got. And also, is Jao Victor no longer on an ESC deal? There isn't that pressure to play him in every single game. He and Ferreira are two players we could rotate around or certainly use interchangeably just based off form. Yeah, I like Ferreira a lot. I am questioning if I need to bring anyone in to replace Guerrero, but I think Xenia's just going to be the man I'd put faith in. In Xenia, we trust. And actually, when you look at the depth we've got out on the right-hand side, there's a whole host of players we could use there. Ferrarinson, I know, is listed as one such player. Um, let's be honest. As a Trequatista, he is very, very lacking. No composure, no decision-making, no vision. He's not really a creative player by any means, which is kind of the whole point in that role. But behind him, the likes of Heinz, I think, can slot in there and do a job if needed. Obviously, Xenia is there. Oscar as well. Not that I'd necessarily want to play him there, but in case of emergency, he wouldn't be the worst fit in the world for Trek Quatista. If he's playing there, things have probably gone wrong. But you take my point. He's serviceable. Okay, Ferreira's work permit's been rejected, but I am just going to allocate him an ESC slot. Might be a bit of a challenge to get him the required minutes to get him on a proper full deal. But given the fact we do get the extra ESC slots in the championship, um, they're not quite as precious as they have been in previous years. Welcome to the Club Mar team. Not exactly the most exciting of signings, but I feel like he's a good necessary player to bring in. It is a signing that regrettably probably knocks Timmy down the kind of pecking order that little bit more. When you compare the two players, I think Martim is way, way better in terms of what we need in the position we're playing him in. And we've already having players like Masters around as well, who I could probably sell if I wanted to. I do wonder if I could sell a defensive mid now. Sean Nesbitt as well. You know, we look to get rid of him. Maybe... Maybe, maybe, maybe I can cash in on a defensive mid. I mean, when you look at defensive midfielders in our ranks, uh, it's safe to say that Masters is massively overrated by our staff. I don't think he's as good as is implied here. I am looking at Masters, wondering if there might be some interest in him, given his current value. The player who I'd really like to sell is Timmy, with his high value. Um, I mean, he, is, is there any interest in him, Mr. Agent? Apparently there's no interest in him. I could try and hire an intermediary, but they don't think there's any interest either. I mean, if Timmy's not available to be sold, and to be fair, given his value, I understand why no one would want him at that price. Could I sell Masters? Should I sell Masters? Is there any interest in him? No is the answer. So right now the first team sits at 28 players, which feels maybe a little bit big, but at the same time, the five players we've got highlighted here, Nesbitt, Masters, Aaron King, Espinosa and Warren, they are all players that I've made available for the under 21, so they just train with the first team. A few of them are players who will find themselves on the bench from time to time in the case of an injury crisis, but whilst 28 feels like a big scary number, and when you can scroll through the list of players, it feels too big, that there is some method to the madness. I love the fact that we're getting agents offering players to us. Hassam Abbas, 22 years old, Australian. Weird set of attributes. Weird set of positions he can play as well. He's one of those players who's like a good athlete, but maybe not a good footballer. He doesn't really suit a role, does he? He's weird. You know we're going for a deep dive on players when I'm now looking at 19-year-olds with international caps to find out if there's anyone who could be good here. Any players that my scouts have maybe looked at that I've not had a proper look at, or indeed players that my scouts haven't looked at who look quite good. Just like this guy, Arben Selmenaj. Definitely not said wrong. Maybe he's related to Nicki Minaj. Who knows? Uh, this guy, super consistent performer, can play centre-back and right-back. 
can also play defensive mid. Don't necessarily need a defensive mid right now, but he is currently on an amateur deal in Macedonia. Does that mean he's going to cost us nothing if I want to sign him? He wants to be a squad player. Will he take breakthrough prospect? The answer is no. What about impact sub? He loved that. Uh, how much does he want here? £2,000 a week. I mean, he's super consistent and he's only 19. I quite like the look of him. He did have a few clauses I didn't like. I'm going to try offering him a top division promotional wage rise and also a contract extension after promotion. He didn't love that. I'll offer him the £2.5,000, but I'm going to lock in an optional contract extension for the club of two years. He's asking for 2.7, 2.5. Spit on it, shake on it. Arben, welcome to the club. Why am I signing 19-year-olds from Macedonia who play at the amateur levels? The honest answer is I don't know, but my scouts seem to like him, and I feel like he's better than Andrani. Am I being unfair on Andrani here? I just need to check. No, you know what? I, I don't think I am being unfair at all. Also, he's 19. This might upset some people. Uh, Andrani, do you want to leave? Uh, probably a bit late to be trying to get rid of him on deadline day. He might be playing with the kids. Realise that sounds a bit dodgy. What I mean is he might be in the under-21s. Jack, what did you spend the £35 million you got for Guerrero on? Well, we got two amateur players from Macedonia and New Zealand, and then a Portuguese player who turned me down two months ago to be a backup. Yeah, deadline day, everyone. <laughs> deadline day. I'm not going crazy thinking this guy's good, am I? I like the, I just like the look of him. He's, he's a very good player. I mean, at this point, I want to look through the rest of the players my scouts have looked at here. Are there any more amateur players that we've found? Contract status, amateur. Who have you got for me? Have we scouted any more amateur players? There's Raul Decker. We've looked at Decker before, haven't we? I realise that when people ask, Jack, what do you do for a living? And I say, well, I was looking at the Lithuanian Amateur League. People think that's mental. Imagine what your friends think when they ask you, hey, what did you do on your lunch break? Oh, I watched Work the Spaces video, learning all about the amateur leagues of Lithuania. Uh, I say the amateur leagues. Is this the amateur leagues? I, I have no idea. FC Banger Guard die. There'll be someone who's watching from Lithuania. Is this a top division team? I don't know. I have had a look through all these amateur players. I think Arben is just the best one by a mile. I was just looking at 21-year-olds that we've got scouted that might be interested in a move. Familiar faces popped up here. Isaac Pritchard. He's currently out on loan in League One. Just as a reminder, we sold him for £1.4 million to Middlesbrough. Can't help but feel like we've scammed them there, especially because they're paying him £16,000 a week. Kane Bissix here is currently transfer listed by Coventry. He has mad, mad potential. He actually looks like a pretty good player, but he's super injury prone and has a competitive streak. And that does just scare me slightly. I keep thinking about this bloke from The Strongest. We've now got a scout report in for him. Our scouts have rushed one through on deadline day. He's 18 years old with Cats of Bolivia. Mad potential, super consistent. I don't even know if we would be able to get him a work permit because I don't think we've got an ESC slot now. Have we got one ESC slot free? I've lost track. Okay, technically we've got one free, but I think Arben's going to take it. I mean, I don't need Jose for right now. He's the kind of player who I'd probably sign and then look to loan out. Saying all of that, he does want to be a star player. So that could be a problem. Also, he wants to treat the club as a stepping stone. We're removing that. I'll make you a star player. How much money are you going to want a week? He might not get a work permit after all this, I realise. Jose is currently on £500 a week. I'm going to offer him £2,500 a week, but I am locking in an optional contract extension. Okay, he's just tweaked a load of stuff here. Let me review. Okay, to be honest, his demands weren't that outrageous. I removed the bonus he wanted for avoiding relegation this year because I think we're going to be able to do that. He's agreed to this contract, though. Which, I mean, the scouts think he's an A-rated player. Is, is his potential really good? I mean, I'd love to think so because he does look quite good. Should I be concerned that I'm signing too many attacking midfielders? Maybe, but when you look at Jose compared to Aaron King here, he is very, very good. I don't know if he's necessarily a good Trek Watista, but I mean, he could play there in an emergency if he gets a work permit. Although when you compare him with Xenia, he is going to have to improve quite a lot. I feel like you go through different eras during a Park to Prem save game. I think I've just entered my hoarding wonder kids and young players for the sake of it era. Uh, Jose, he's been granted a work permit. He's been granted a pissing work, but I can't believe it. I thought we were going to have to use an ESC slot on him, but it turns out, no, we are not. The Bolivian Beast. I can come up with a better nickname than that for him. But he's arriving. He's here. Now, have I shot myself in the foot by promising him he's a star player? Probably. He's not going to be a star player for us. But he doesn't need to know that. And right now, he's contracted for three years. Let me click this button. Now he's contracted for five years.
love football manager contracts me. Okay, there's three hours left to deadline day. I'm not going to jinx it by saying it before we get too late, but I don't think we're losing in Goma. Arben will appeal his work permit rejection and hope that he gets it. It's been rejected still, but because I wanted to sign him because he's fun, we're just going to give him the ESC slot that we've got spare. I know there's going to be some people who are annoyed by the transfers I've made today, but you know what? I've had fun with all of them. Are any of them necessary? Prob probably not. But it's just good vibes. I also know there's going to be someone really, really annoyed. I've not signed a goalkeeper. No, no, Josh Keeley, we trust you, mate. I think. I hope. Please be good this year. If nothing else, I just feel like we've signed some more fun young players. Look at this. We've got so many players who are in the first team who I have just made available for our under-21s. They won the league last year, our under-21s. They're definitely going to win it again this year with these additions. Okay, 30 minutes left of deadline day. It's come, it's gone, it's over. Here, by the way, is the visual representation to end today's episode of the wage expenditure. Mentioned this earlier with Nottingham Forest. Look where we are down here. We spend £86,000 a week on players. Nottingham Forest spend £1.6 million. Yeah, bad. Top transfer window deal, by the way. Dembele to Brentford. Yeah, Dembele to Brentford. Brentford in the championship, by the way. <laughs> Football manager's bloody weird, isn't it? So just to recap, five signings made today, four on deadline day. The first, Christian Martinez, very, very good right back. Like the look of him a lot. He will be playing ahead of Ricky D this year. Arben, the amateur from Macedonia, has joined us to use our final ESC slot. He just looks quite fun. Aaron King, I've just signed for New Zealand representation and because he was on an amateur deal and I feel like he deserves a shot at the big time. If he turns out to be good, they'll make a movie about him. Martin Ferreira joined us, a player we eyed up in the summer but couldn't sign him back then. He wanted over £10,000. He's now joined us on £4,000 a week. And last but perhaps most excitingly, Jose Luis... Colke, I don't know how to say his last name, answers on a postcard. The Bolivian has international caps. He's 18 years old, although he does turn 19 very soon. In fact, he turns 19 in six days. I'll make sure we get a cake for him. He's a player who has mad potential, question marks over his current ability, but he's got a work permit, which is usually an indicator he could be very, very good. £750,000 for him is not cheap by any means, but with the potential he's got, uh, and the money we've got, I think it's just worth a risk. I'll level with you. Today's transfer episode was a bit weird. I kind of came into it with no plans. I just knew there was a Sheffield United game and some money to spend. If you enjoyed this kind of video, maybe I can do it in the future for deadline days if there is indeed moves to be made like there was this time around. Like I said last episode, I feel like this year we're just kind of going to go with the flow, see how the season's panning out. Right now, there's an outside shot at the playoffs. Let's try and aim for that. Whether or not we'll be there come next episode, given the run of games we've got, I mean, I'll be honest, it is completely up in the air. The Championship is a weird league. I have a feeling this is going to be a weird season. Thank you so much for watching as always. I'll see you guys tomorrow on the next one. And until then, take things easy. It's me, Jack, and I'll talk to you guys in a bit. I'm out.